Okay, guys, so we're into chapter three now, and no, it's not a uh, typo or anything. Um, we are looking at 3.2. We're going to skip 3.1 and come back to it at the end of chapter three. I just don't really like the order that they do this chapter in, so we'll mix it up a little bit. So we're going to start with 3.2 instead. And this chapter, chapter three, is all about polynomials. So we've been working with quadratics, but now we're gonna up the scale and we're going to look at polynomials that have a higher order, so, um, or a higher degree. So we're gonna look at polynomials. So we're going to focus, we focus on polynomials, which have the form P of X, so polynomial, so P of X, they have the form AX to the N plus BX to the N minus one plus CX to the N minus two, dot, 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 okay? So polynomials, a quadratic is most definitely a polynomial, but it doesn't need to be. As long as these ends are whole numbers, as long as the N is a whole number, then you have a polynomial. So we might see something along the lines of p of x equals 4x to the 6th minus 3x to the 5th plus 7x squared minus 16. Not only is this a higher um, degree or a higher exponent than the 2, so it's definitely a higher order uh, polynomial, it's also missing parts, and that's perfectly okay. Okay, it can be missing parts. Um, but a couple things that we want to make sure when we write down our polynomials anytime. So make sure that they are in what we call descending order. So the highest degree comes first or the highest exponent, second highest, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so we want to be in descending order by exponent, order, by exponent. And the other thing is the word that I just keep using here, and I keep calling this a degree. And the degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent. So the degree is the highest exponent. Okay. So in our case, this is a sixth degree polynomial. Okay, so just a couple things, you know, to get on the board there so that we understand what this format is going to look like. So P of X will be our notation. Try to always have them in descending order. Highest exponent is the degree, so this would be a sixth degree. Missing pieces is perfectly acceptable. It definitely can happen. Okay, so with that, it, um, written down, then we're ready to look at the remainder theorem. And basically what we're gonna do, the word remainder might make you think of division. So we are going to focus on polynomial division. So polynomial division. And we might see something like, um, well, let's go 4x to the 5th minus 2x to the 4th plus 6x squared minus 7x plus 1 divided by x minus 4. So it's very possible that we might see something like this. And this is a polynomial division problem, but this is not something that we want to do long division. So in the past, if you have done this, you may have seen like a full-on long division problem where you put x minus four out here and you put the polynomial inside like this. And if you learn how to do that, fantastic. I applaud you. But part of pre-calculus is learning the stuff that we need to know and then kind of eliminating some of the stuff that we don't really need. And I can't really think of a reason why we need to do this the long way. Okay, so we are not going to do this. Let me change pens here. Okay, so we're not gonna do that one. 
Okay, so we're going to skip that portion of this and we're going to move into what we call synthetic division. So let's look at synthetic division. And I shouldn't have made up this big hideous problem because I really don't know what the answer is and I don't want to, you know, possibly end up with horrible, horrible answers here. So let's go ahead and use some that are actually, you know, work a little bit better. Um, so let's say that I gave you the problem 4x cubed, they start you smaller, minus 2x squared plus 1, and I want you to divide by x minus 3. Okay, so we won't do the big hideous one, we'll start off nice and slow. So synthetic division is a type of division that's not this long division, it's a type of division that can be used when we're dividing by x minus c or x plus c, so just depending on what this guy is. So um, synthetic division is used when dividing by x minus c, which is the case that we have here, the case that we have here. And honestly, this is the only time that you will ever need to do um, division, really, that I could think of. There's one other place later on in the, in the book. So yeah, there's another time, but still synthetic division works. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to work through synthetic division without having to do all of the long division crib crap. And once you get the hang of this, then this becomes a really fast process. So in order to do synthetic division, we make a box. Now, if this is your paper, there should be two lines in your box. So here's the top line, second line. Okay, so that's how your box is going to look. Now, again, you may have learned this somewhere else. If your box looks a little different than mine, I don't really care. Just get it done, okay? Um, some people put a little shelf out front. Other people don't put the shelf. Totally your choice. But in the top line of the box, we are going to take not all of the numbers, but just the coefficients, just the numbers, I'm sorry, not all of the polynomial, just the numbers, and we're gonna write them down. So we're gonna write down four, and then we're gonna write down negative two. Don't forget to take the sign with you. And now we've got a thing that we have to pay attention to. Notice how we're in descending order, but we are missing the X term, aren't we? So we're going to put a placeholder of a zero, placeholder. So it's okay to be missing a term, but it has to be represented as a zero here. And then our last guy will be a one. Now, out on the shelf, okay, out on the shelf, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the number we're dividing by. So we're dividing by x minus three, but here's the dealio. We're not going to put minus three, we're gonna flip the sign on it. So we're gonna put a positive three on the outside. And that is honestly what makes synthetic division so much easier. You might be like, why, who cares? But if anybody's ever done the long division, you'll understand why this is, this is so much nicer in a second. Okay, so now what the, pro the problem is, is to, we're gonna fill in the box, basically. So we start by taking the four and bringing it down under the box. Now, any time that we are on the outside of the box, we're going to multiply. So we're going to take 4 times 3, and we're going to put it in the next position, 12. Then we're going to combine. So if it's subtraction, it's subtraction. If it's addition, it's addition. So now this will be a 10, right? 12 minus 2. Outside the box, again, we're going to multiply. So that turns that into a 30. Inside, we combine, so that will also be a 30 because of the, the zero. Outside, we multiply. Okay, 90, yes. And then finally, 91. So what we've done, essentially, is we have done the, the division problem. We've done this long division. It just doesn't look like it because what we, what we have is the answer but without all of the x's. So what we need to do is reintroduce the x's back in here. And the answer 
is down here, okay? So this guy is the quotient. And this guy at the end is the remainder. So we're gonna lower our exponent by one. So this is now gonna be four x squared. Okay, it was a cube, so now it's a squared. Plus 10 x, and we're gonna cycle down, plus 30, remainder 91. Okay. All right, there we go. That's synthetic division. Now, before we do any more, and we will do more, don't, don't you worry, we're gonna do synthetic division, but I wanna put up the remainder theorem here. So the remainder theorem says, the remainder theorem. So this says, if P of X is being divided by x minus c, whatever c might be, then p of c is equal to the remainder, okay? Or p of c is equal to r. Now, I haven't, we don't really introduce the letter r, but just so if you see that. Okay, so what this means is when we do this division, this remainder actually has a bunch of importance. So let's look at it to start with. So I'm gonna rewrite this up, but I'm gonna write up the same problem, but just in a little bit different notation. So I'm gonna say let P of X equal four X cubed minus two X squared plus one. And I want you to find P of three, okay? Find P of three. Now, I know that you could plug three in there, cube that, multiply by four, plug three in there, do that, do the whole entire thing. I know that you could do that. And it wouldn't be horrible, especially with your calculator, but if we're having to do this this many times over and over and over again, even using your calculator starts to become kind of a tedious mess. So what the remainder theorem says is that if you want to find P of three, you can do division like we did, put the little three on the shelf and whatever pops out as the remainder is your answer. So we've already done the problem so I can very quickly say the answer is 91. Okay. What if I wanted to find P of negative two? Now again, I know you could plug in, but that's not the point. We're just practicing here. So if I want to find P of negative two, we're gonna erase this whole thing, and we're gonna start the process over again. So another synthetic division. We're putting our four, negative two, zero, one up top. This time on the shelf, we're gonna put the negative two. Now I want you to notice here, when we divided, it would have been x minus three, or in this case, it would be x plus two. But we're flipping the sign when it goes on the shelf. So if they ask you to find p of negative two, you just stick a negative two there. Don't worry about flipping the sign. That's the nice thing about this. Okay, so we come down, and if you guys are doing this without listening to me blab, you're probably already done. So we bring the four down. That makes this negative eight, right? Multiply, then we subtract in this case, negative 10. This puts us at positive 20, right? 20, negative 40, and then negative 39. Now, on this one, we really don't care about this because we're just talking about the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem says that if we wanted to find P of negative two, the answer is negative 39, okay? Quick and easy, quick and fast. 
And especially if you don't have your calculator, none of the calculations that I've been doing here have required a calculator, have they? Okay, so let's say that I gave you, today's the last day for college of kids and college for kids and they're running around and so you might be hearing a little bit of yelling in the background or the people next door are doing some science project, but it's all, all in good fun. Um, let's see, I don't wanna do that one yet. Okay. What if we were given, oh, they, this one they give you a mean. So here they say uh, P of X equals four minus eight X minus 12 X squared. And they want to find P of three halves. So a couple things that are kind of mean about this one. First off is the fraction, but the second thing is, is that they put this out of order. So very first, I'm gonna put this in that descending order we talked about, because when we go to put it into our, our synthetic division, it's got to be in the correct order. Now, that might not, you might not think that that's the ugliest part of this problem. You might be like, oh crap, a fraction. But believe it or not, it's still not that bad. So let's make our, our box here with our little shelf. We're gonna put three halves on the shelf. Don't forget the signs, negative 12, negative eight, four. Didn't need any placeholders, did we? We got everybody accounted for. Okay, so we're good to go. So we come down under the box and we put negative 12. Now negative 12 times three is negative 36 divided by two is negative 18. Okay, negative 18 minus eight more. Ooh, okay, so that one's gonna be negative 26. Now, this time I think I'll do the division first. Negative 26 divided by two is negative 13 times three is negative 39. And now if we add them together, we'll be at negative, or subtract them in this case, negative 35. So P of three halves is negative 35. Okay. And we're done with that one. So even that fraction um, saw us okay, didn't it? All oh, right, um, let's see. I wanna see one where they are missing some pieces, but I don't like the problems they have. Guess what, we're gonna make one up. Okay, I don't like the problems they have in the book. I'll try not to make it too ugly here. So let's say that P of X is equal to, um, let's go with two X to the fourth minus three X cubed plus uh, 3x plus 1. And we want to find p of negative 4. We'll even see how weird it gets with negative 4. All right. So we make our box, put our negative 4 on the line, and then when we go to write this in, remember, it get, you get into the habit of doing this fast, but we need those placeholders. So we've got two, negative three, zero, right? Somebody is missing here, three and one. Under the box comes the two. Now we have negative eight, okay? Negative 11. Okay, the numbers are getting bigger, but that's okay, we can still do it negative 44, so negative 44, wait, oh, nope, that's a positive 44, isn't it? Make sure you get the correct sign, so positive 44. So 44 times four is 16, 176, and it'll be negative. So that'll put us at negative 173. 
And yes, unfortunately, I have given you large numbers. So 173 times 4, 12, 29, 6. So that's going to be a positive 692, right, with the two negatives. So this will be 693. And we can now say that P of negative 4 is 693. Now, I promise, if, especially if you were doing that without a calculator and you're trying to plug in 4s here and cube them and raise them to the 4th power and everything, messes can get made. So this is actually quite a bit easier. Okay, so that's the first part of this is the division and then the remainder theorem. So let's take a break here. We'll come back with part two, which is the factor theorem, which really is not that much harder. Okay, bye.